Good morning, everyone. It's Linda from Linda Z's and the Thursday morning coffee learning session. And I'm thrilled to be able to introduce a guest speaker here in a few minutes. But before I do, again, some of you have seen this new machine that I really want to talk about. It's going to be a phenomenal promotion and it's almost over. So you're going to need to, if you really want what I'm talking about, you're going to have to do something about it today. This is the new Bernina 850, which is a two, three, and a four thread machine surging that has taken the overlock industry by storm. It's phenomenal. You can see here, I can lean over and see what's going here. See that little swing out foot? It's got the new air threading that everybody is talking about and look at the wonderful tools on board. You can take your foot and on the foot control, you don't have to thread the, the thread down in here. You touch it and whoosh, it goes right through to everything. It has the automatic needle threader. It has a built-in tray. It's so new that it's hard to get off, but look at what's underneath here, the open arm, which I think is just going to be a wonderful thing. I'm gonna show you why we think it's so great. There's another machine coming, and I do have a picture of it, and I think, Nick, you're gonna put it out there for me. It is the cover lock and sewing and serger combined. It's the first straight stitch machine, so it's got the uh, chain, which is the chain stitch, which you can do, of course, on your shoulder and your side seam if you wanted to do a couple of little um, in reinforcement stitches. So there's some phenomenal things, however, and one of the best things and the best kept secrets, I think, is this wonderful colored screen, which is not just a pretty thing, it operates the machine. It's the only serger in the world that will do that. And of course, it's made by those fabulous, great Swiss engineers. They're not only really smart and good, but they're really good looking too. So it's kind of fun to know that we get a name on a little card by everyone that is uh, coming into our store. The deposit must be in by today in order to get these machines. With our big, we have a big package, just call the store and we'll tell you what it's all about, but you wanna get your deposit in. If you don't get it in today, it will be next year before you're gonna get them. And we're going right into the queue right away, so we hopefully will be one of the first ones to get your deposits in there. Now. And this is the Tula that we're gonna talk a little bit about too. We have something really wonderful going on that uh, we've had Angela Wolf that has been doing quite a bit of work and you know that she does a lot of surging work with stretch fabrics and we've also done by Annie and that's why we have the machine here. My guest speaker today is <laughs> Sue Ellen Gerard, and I'm thrilled to have you, Sue Ellen. <laughs> it's nice to be here. And Sue Ellen, you just got off of a wonderful canoe, and um, believe it or not, she does. She doesn't look like she's a camper, but she and her husband uh, Tanner were up in the North Woods, right? Yep, on the Boundary Waters. We canoed and fished and camped for a whole week. Yeah, it was and, great, and she still looked <laughs> beautiful. So obviously, the weather and everything was good for you. What are you holding there? Well, I'm pretty excited because Linda Z's carries some couture fabrics and I found this one. So I'm bringing it to the Angela Wolf workshop Friday, oh, Saturday to wow. use on a serger. Oh, that'll be great because now you don't have to bring a sewing machine too if you happen to have the 890. Well, you won't I have, won't that, have time. that No. So you will need to use both. You'll need to use your sewing yep. machine for your seams and you'll need to use your serger for your overlock. Right. Now, um, when the new 890 comes, you won't have to do that. So you'll be able to do everything. <laughs> now, tell us, what are you going to do on Thursday? Well, on Thursday... I mean, today. <laughs> today is Thursday, by the yes. way. <laughs> well, and it'll be a change of clothes, too. Oh, good. But on, on the Tulip Pink, I will be demonstrating the Annie bags. And this is, we're entering our fourth year of doing wow. Annie it's programs. I know. It, it really it's is. amazing. But the program for mm -hmm. this week is the uh, Mad About Men. Mesh. Mad and, about mesh. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, they're great little bags. They're fun to sew up. and I've seen you do them, and they're yeah. really, really cool. So you're going to do step by step now. Yep. Actually go into and show them every single yep. little step. Mm -hmm. I don't know if our audience is really aware of how talented this young lady is and how lucky that you are. We normally would charge for these events or classes, but because of what's going on, we have really tried to help you by doing this at this point for no charge. And we're it's about, what, a 30, 30 minutes? 
About It'll be 31 minutes for this, this okay. video. Okay, so it's not that long, and you can save it. Be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Most of you already are, and that way in the future, they'll all be in one place. You should have seen me running around trying to find my old masks. Um, I have a couple new ideas for masks that I've really been working on. Um, I don't know if I put mine out it's here. It's right over there by the other yeah, machine. I'm going to grab it real quick. I know Nick <laughs> is going to have a corner here again. <laughs> This is one of the, th this is the same mask pattern that we've used all along with, it's kind of like the Olsen mask, except that it is open here. And because of that, um, you can slide your filter inside. But this is a new hospital fabric that we just received that the doctors and the uh, nurses are using for their garments and their masks. And so it's in the store in black, which we can't find anywhere. We, have th we had three bolts of it. I don't know <laughs> what we'll have left. And of course, a little fun thing. But on my Bernina, I did, and I know we can't get this up close, but you can see the beautiful top stitching on this. And because for me, I, I really have this fitted nice on my face. I take a little tuck on the side. I have a little flip over. Um, piece to put in the, the um, nose piece, and then I have it conformed right to my face. So there is nothing showing, and you probably can't hear me either. <laughs> okay. So these are some of the fun projects that we've been working on on both the Berninas, and we just are thrilled to be able to offer you these things. I hope you're enjoying them, and I know you're going to love what we're going to show you next. Welcome to Just Meshing Around. So this is kind of a fun bag for the summer. Um, it, it lets you see what's in the bag and it keeps it nice and, um, and, nice and, and, um, and dry. And it also serves as a little backpack. So the, the pattern we're talking about today is called Just Meshing Around. Now, as with any of the Annie projects, the first thing that we do is we make the components. So I have everything cut out and I have it set up in stages to go. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the straps and do some of the pressing. So let's go over. I'll meet you at the iron. So to make the straps, you can either um, you can either take this and fold it in half and then fold each part into the middle and then fold it together. Or what I like to do is I like to use a bias tape maker. And so I feed this in. It's kind of a U shape in the back. They come in all different sizes. I use different sizes, but you just then run it right down. Let me also show you where I have to join two pieces together. And so what Annie has you do these days is on the early pattern sheet, this is kind of a change. And so she, you reinforce the seam and so that it stays nice and flat, especially if you're making some of the tubes where you're making straps and, and threading something through it, it does make a difference in, in not having anything get caught up. So this is a pretty fast way to, to make a strap. And then we would just go and fold it in half and press it. Then we're going to sew on each side of, you know, sew all the way around on all sides. And this is what makes the strap. So they're pretty long, but they work well. The other thing that you have to do is after you have put on the, the, um, the, um, the adhesive, the, the iron-on backing, then you need to press one side of these facing strips up a quarter inch. And I can estimate a quarter inch. This just helps me be a little bit more accurate. I use this a lot in garment sewing when I want to be super accurate and um, make sure that I my what I'm doing when I'm pressing a hem or something, if I want to have it actually accurate. But in this case, since I'm going to be um, using this in, a, in, the, in the bag, it helps to have this accurate because I'm going to sew along here and then I'll be bringing this back up around here to, to, to sew it on as well. So let's go over to the sewing machine. This is a pretty straightforward, quick project. So I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. So the, the 
pattern calls for using the fold over elastic on the top and the bottom, but on the bottom of this, it gets sewn straight to fabric. And so it's not going to be stretching. So you really do need to use this, the fold over elastic or something that's stretchy on the top, but on the bottom, you have a choice. And so I, I, um, I wanted to demonstrate how you would use this instead. So this is just a two inch wide piece of fabric. And I'm just gonna sew it at a quarter inch. <laughs> Again, when you're working with mesh, keep the mesh on top, keep your eye on it because it's just like a, a kid who needs extra supervision. Well, this is your extra supervision piece of fabric. I could take this back to the iron, but I'm going to do this right here. And again, the mesh is going to stretch more going sideways than it is going up and down. You can always tell because the, the holes in it are ovals and they stretch farther the wide way than the tall way. So after getting this on, then we're going to ma match it up and we can sew using the edge foot. And if I keep that mesh tied exactly together, it's going to be nice on either side. Now the fold over elastic, you only have to sew one time. I want it to go over that one. With this, it, you have to have a little bit more cutting and you have two lines of sewing rather than one. Whoops, cut a thread. But this, what this is doing is binding in the, the mesh, and so there is no mesh sticking out at all. Oops, I slipped a little bit there. So you can just bind the bottom using a piece of fabric. The other, the thing that you do need to do is you really do need to use the fold over elastic on the top. I recommend it for the bottom and the top. I can show you on others, but, um, and I'm using a contrasting thread since the bags are orange. I'm using all different colors of elastic and all different colors of mesh. And so the orange, it just kind of ties it all together. The fold over elastic has kind of a ditch down the middle that makes it very easy to fold. When you when you see fold over elastic, look on some of your sportswear. I I found it was used for the cuff on my polar fleece jacket. And so you can find this this fold over elastic is is um, great stuff and it's it's great for using in in garments as well as in bags and um, it's also good in, in uh, sewing masks if you're still making masks. So this shows the two different ways. So you have the elastic on the top 
and you have the, the fabric on the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew this to the bag. And so we're going to sew it to the piece that has the interfacing on it already. I have the lines drawn. And so this is going to be the bottom of the bag. It's going to end up like this. And so you want to make sure that the open part, the part you're not going to sew, is at the top. And so, I'm going to, I will not be sewing the green part shut. I will be sewing along the bottom of the fabric strip. Now, the other thing I've done is I have, um, I have drawn the, line, the vertical lines because, and so that's actually combining a couple steps, but you're, there, the big wide pocket is divided into three smaller pockets. So I just went ahead and I drew those lines ahead of time. And so I'm gonna go down the side. Over to here. And then we're going to go along the bottom and see, I have a line drawn here. So I'm going to line this one up. And I have the, the edge right inside that foot there. And then we'll get over to here. And then I'm going to just turn. And I'm going to go up, straight up. And then I'll go straight back down. And I will continue along the way, lining this up with that blue line at the bottom. I'll go straight up. So this is actually combining a couple steps, but what it does is it lets me have fewer um, thread ends throughout the bag, and so there are less places to come unraveled and unsewn. This side. Make sure it's right at the blue line. And we have the pocket in the bag. So we have our three different pockets. So that's now all on the bag, ready to put the rest of it together. After you have that together, then the next step will be to sew the front and the back together. Now in sewing the front and back together, let me show you, let me let you peek inside here. And so we have the, the mesh that's going to be up at the top. This mesh is going to be then sandwiched in between the inside and outside layers. And so on this one, I'm using yellow mesh. So I have the yellow mesh sandwiched in between the inside and outside bases. So I'm not sewing the sides on this. 
All I'm sewing are across the, the top and bottom of this. Here. Don't want to sew over a pin. You need to keep that mesh just poking out the edge. So I know that I'm okay as long as I see a little bit of that mesh poking out. You can also kind of feel it inside and so where my fingers are I can feel the mesh. Same on the other side. We're going to turn it in, turn it right side out. So that now we have these two pieces that are sticking out. Now I already went ahead and did one side, but let me show you what you do on the other side. So now you're going to take the piece that we pressed the edge up, and we're going to sew it right along here. Let me check, but I believe on this one, see we've done this, we've done this, so this, this is really nice instructions. So we're going to add in these tabs and we're finishing off, off those. Um, but I believe, yes, you're, you have the half inch that's folded over and then we fold in a quarter inch on each end. Probably should have the mesh on top. It's not wanting to behave. Someone once told me that if you go really fast, the fabric doesn't have a chance to get away from you. So I'm trying that method right now. Just see if I go really fast, if the mesh then stays in place. Turn the ends in. And you don't sew across the ends at all because when you, um, when you, this is, this is the casing for, for the, um, 
the strap. So you don't sew across these. You're going to just finish these ends in. Keep the crest on it so we don't mess it all up. There we go. And now we fold this down and over. And we'll match these up. And I'll put the edge stitch put back on. I'm going to edge stitch straight across the bottom. Start in reverse. And then I'll take the pins out. Four on this side, so we'll go four to the other side and we'll stitch down the top. Make a French seam and what a French seam means is you're going to put the wrong sides together first and you're going to sew the wrong sides together and then we'll turn it inside out and so you'll have the whole seam encased. Now the other thing you're going to do is you're not going to do any sewing you're going to have a half inch up here that is not sewn at all and never will be. So I'm going to put this up here and then we'll come down here We'll match this. And we'll match this. So now, because of, probably because I'm cheap, I didn't have enough of the mesh to have both pieces going the same way. And so this one stretches more going sideways. This one stretches more going up and down. So this one's stretchier the way that I'm sewing it. So I'm putting it on the bottom because the feed dogs help it go a little bit more. And so if you have two pieces of fabric and one is less, one is more stretchy, or just a little bit bigger or anything like that, put it on the bottom and it will feed through just fine. 
I'm going to go just a scant quarter inch here. sure that they stay together. trim it. I need to do the other side. So I've turned this, now their right sides are together. And I pressed it. And so now this is what's called the French seam. The seam that I just sewed is now pointing inside. And now I'm going to sew this seam. And I'll sew it just a little bit bigger than the last seam I sewed so that the entire seam will be enclosed inside the inside. And there won't be any. It also makes it a little, a little um, sturdier. But this is done a lot in garments, and so that you don't have any, any seams that are um, raw edges at all inside. And so this is very common in garments, and it's a really nice, nice way to finish things off. Whoops, that me the mesh was not behaving. So we'll just go back. And make it behave. And if I was using yellow thread, you wouldn't even see this in the mesh. Now I'm up at the top where we don't have any sewing at all. It's just raw edge mesh for the last half inch. Now we'll do the same thing over here. right side out and there are no no raw edges any place on the outside it's nice on the inside it's nice and so you have no raw edges at all just some threads to clip 
And now, this is one of my favorite things. I'm attaching this to one end. This helps me thread it through pretty quickly. I'm going to go back the other way. Do the other one. I'm going to take it off. And I take these two ends and I get them even. And I'm going to tie them here. And then I take it down through here. I put one, I thread one through the loop. And I tie the other side as well. There's one side. I'm not going to pull it tight yet. So I may have thread, threaded the shorter one. This just clamps on. It's great for threading elastic through things. It's, it's really a, a nice, nice option. So then we'll go this way. And back around. Get the ends even. So now you can see how it just pulls closed. And I'll attach this side, and you're ready to go with your bag.